Madam Board of Selectmen, uh, for Wednesday, June 13, 2012. I'm sorry we're starting a little late. We had another meeting that just got finished. So, uh, welcome everybody. And the first hour order on our agenda is the Woodbridge Board of Education, and Dr. Stoller, our superintendent, is here. Good evening, Dr. Stoller. Good evening, everyone. <coughs> Well, we're rapidly coming in for a landing, <laughs> and at the same time getting ready to take off with our many summer school programs in between. Uh, so things are going well at the school. We just had a, an animated conversation. There are a lot of events happening even during this busy time. One was the 20th year celebration of the MAG, the multi-age program that took place last Friday. The scene was believing over 300 people, and that included past, what we term ancestors of the MAG program, meaning children, staff, and parents, came back for the reunion to join with present members, students, parents, and staff. And over 300 people, again, took over the campus. Um, the older, the, the ancestors shared stories about their experiences. There was music. There were videos. There was all kinds of interchange. Uh, Susan. I believe your boys were there too. Both my boys went through the multi-age program. They're now in their early 20s. One lives in Massachusetts, one lives in Washington. It's not like they were around the corner and they both got on trains and came and celebrated with their classmates. And you know, as I was just saying to Dr. Stella, <coughs> boys don't usually talk too much. You know, you right. say, how was it? They usually go flying. Yeah. <laughs> they have they they talked about it for a long time, about how wonderful it was to see all the teachers and the administrators and their fellow classmates and they shared pictures and it was a very warm and fuzzy experience for them and I want to thank Beecher Road School for putting that together in the multi-age program. I know that Lawrence's kids were involved as well and it just yeah. it really you don't have those kind of roots Friday. in most places. Yeah, those are, those roots run deep. Friday night did you want to say anything more? Well just to echo what's been said uh, the, uh, the continuity that was uh, represented by those by those who participated to to see reunions uh, of you know among people who knew each other decades ago and and they share the, they share the same legacy which is the multi age group at Beecher Road School and and I just I I walked around the the, the property on Friday evening. Thinking to myself, there isn't a, there isn't another primary school where there where there are reunions like this. I, I have never seen anything like it. But I want to emphasize the, uh, the multi age is part and parcel of Beach Road School. It's not a separate en entity. There are cross connections, and um, <coughs> the program certainly, as a mini community, impacts the school and our, our town, and the school impacts the program. So it's it's all interconnected in a sense. But I can't praise the organizers, the parent organizers, and the uh, uh, who did this, who spent so many months really organizing this event. Mm -hmm. But it's it's uh, symbolic of many things that are happening at the school community and in Woodbridge. That that is unique to Woodbridge. Uh, for example, this last week, uh, once again, we had the annual Beecher Road School Week Long Arts Festival, mm -hmm. and uh, the place, the arts were alive. Um, they, they're alive throughout the year, but in a very particular way this past week. Part, uh, pop art was the, uh, was the focus, was the visual arts emphasis during, during that time. And uh, in true part, pop art style, the school walls were plastered with paintings, and the grounds were animated with eye-popping displays. It was an impressive 11-foot by 45-foot wall of Warhol Andy Warhol's inspired self-portraits of Beecher Road School students and staff, including myself. The kindergarten children made me sit down. They wanted me to paint green, the green teeth and, and um, purple hair. But, you know, <laughs> I refused. I did something else a little different. But, and, and music was front and center, too. There were two bands that were playing. The Grammy Award winner, Les Julian, entertained with his original music, featuring ethnic songs and rhythms from around the world. And the acoustic garage band performed also, and that's led by Andy Bucci, who's a Woodbridge uh, resident and a parent uh, from the Beecher Road School. So again, it was parents and community coming together. 
there was an evening reception on Wednesday night that again I could I, I could I marveled at as far as the number of people who came inter intergenerational uh, <coughs> multicultural of course as our school is and attended by hundreds of adults and children uh, you know we have to thank our art teachers and our music teachers and our PTO and organizing committee and children for we're really making the school come alive. I encourage you to take a walk around the campus. You, you'll see something quite unique, and that, that's another uh, thing that's unique about Beach Road School as an elementary school, and that's the quality of its campus. Uh, in addition to the art and the beaver and the animal life, you'll, you'll, see, you'll, you'll see that the arts are there also and coming alive. Connected with that, there was a, um, an adjudication. Our annual adjudication was held last Friday. And adjudication means that judges, professional judges from the metropolitan area come and they listen to our various groups of children perform. And they have a rubric and they score and they give direct feedback. But the, uh, but the thing is that elementary schools don't have adjudications. Uh, Beecher Road School has it, but ordinarily they don't take place. And I thank the music department, in particular Mr. Lech and the children and the parents who have built it over the years. But it's had an impact on our middle and high school because they participate in it also. We were able, able to send the judges over to the middle school and the, and the high school came over also. But as far as the scores, um, let me share some of that with you. The chorus received platinum, which is the highest score. It was for a perfect performance. The recorder group received the gold, the strings group received the platinum, and the advanced band received the gold. The jazz ensemble received the gold as well. And, uh, and our judges at the end uh, complimented the children by saying that they performed as um, a high-performing group in a, in a high-performing middle school would, not as an elementary school. So. Uh, do we have challenges? Yes. Our challenges is that everybody wants to join the bands now, and we have we, we have a limited number of space and teachers. So, uh, but the arts are alive and well at the school, so I'm very happy to report that. There's a, a passing of leadership of the leadership torch was taking place at this time, as we prepare to go into a, a new school year with a uh, from a co-principal to a principal assistant principal model. And uh, we salute Mrs. Bukwari, who was given 20 years of continuous service at the school as a teacher and also as a, uh, an administrator. So there is continuity in Beecher Road School. And she's passing the torch to uh, Mrs. Nancy White, who has been appointed as assistant principal. And she served well, well over 30 years at the school. So, so sometimes we, we don't realize the continuity that does exist at the school. Our new principal, Gina Prisco, will start. Uh, Prisco will start on July 1st, and uh, we, we look forward to that. I have a, uh, another good administrative team. We're gearing up for our summer programs, and you have uh, uh, our, our summer enrichment starts June 25th, goes goes right to July 27th. So does our extended day, and uh, we have our summer rec program uh, also. The extended day in the summer record to August 3rd. This next week, June 20th, can't believe it, there'll be our sixth grade graduation, and uh, that'll be at Amity High School. Now, I know that the board, the Woodbridge Boards of Selectmen and Finance, recently set the budgets for all the town departments, including the Board of Education, and I would like to publicly thank you on behalf of our children and staff and, and, and our, our Board of Education for the support that you have given education. It's very, very obvious that the citizens of Woodbridge and the members of the board value education. It's such a pleasure to, to work here. And um, I, I wish to express our thanks and gratitude. And to let you know, we're not gonna disappoint you. In the coming year, we're gearing up already. A number of our teachers will be, yes, there'll be some vacation, but uh, a number of our teachers engage in study during the summer, curriculum writing. We do a lot of planning and so on. So we're committed to the town, just as the town is committed to our, to our Board of Education. And uh, thank you for your support with some of the, uh, financially, we're, in, in, we're ending the year in, in, in good shape. Uh, we're careful stewards of every dollar that the town gives us. And with your support and that of the Board of Ed, with some of the money we're using uh, for our second playground, and we plan, as we promised, uh, we will try to keep our promise and have it up before the children come back in, in August. 
but thank you once again for all your support. Thank you. And I did, we read in the paper this week that the, the Beecher Road School has been selected to be in this pilot program for teacher evaluation uh, under this new law in Connecticut. So yes, we were very honored by that. We're one of ten districts or consortia in the in the state uh, to be chosen for this year. So we're teaming up with uh, Orange Elementary and Bethany Elementary Schools as, as part of that. And it gives us a chance to, uh, th this is a state mandated type of program, it gives us a chance to have some input and to, to help build it. Uh, because districts are different. We're, we're, we're a small district and uh, we're a high performing district and there's certain angles that, that, that we want to look at to, to get a growth model we want to influence a growth model of evaluation, one that, that, that will help us to move ahead and, and not a punitive one. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, the next item on our agenda is uh, road paving. And Warren Connors is here. Uh, and in your packet, you should have uh, a memo from Warren to Tony Genovese about recommendation for road reclaiming and milling. And uh, so, if you want to, uh, you want to. And, and the second thing is the list of roads to be done. That was handed out at our meeting in May, I believe. And uh, as far as I know, there's been no no one has taken exception to those. So, if that's the case, I'd entertain a motion to approve those roads to be uh, repaired, uh, reclaimed, or whatever as described uh, in the next months or so. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So those are the roads to be done, Warren, as you suggested. And then uh, the, the prior item on the agenda is award a bid for reclamation and milling to state approved vendor Garrity. So if you want to give us a little background on that. Right. Garrity has been, uh, they're on the, the uh, state bid list as a vendor. They've been the person or firm that's been doing the uh, reclamation and milling work for the town since our paving program started. Um, the request again this year follows suit. There hasn't been any increase in price. There's a small variable between the ultra low vendor and the, they're the second low vendor vendor on the list. There's less than a penny that separates them per square foot on the reclamation and there's like two cents difference between uh, on the milling. And because we have a good working relationship with them as a vendor, if we ask them something that goes a little bit beyond the scope of the work to, to spend a little extra time doing something, they don't balk at it and charge us extra. They just, they just do the work. So we've had a, a very cooperative relationship between the firm and my staff, and we seem to accomplish the, the work in a timely and efficient manner. Um, based on the cost and um, the favorable working relationship, it's my recommendation to request a, a, a bid waiver to utilize them as the uh, milling and reclamation vendor for this year again. So I'd entertain a motion to that effect. So Second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Third item on our agenda is a report from the Southern Connecticut Gas Company and John Dobos and Amos Barnes are here, I believe, and have some good news for Woodbridge. Uh, yes, good evening. <coughs> we were with you uh, several months ago and projects have various stages. And the last time you we were here, we were uh, here doing a presentation and hopefully uh, encouraging you folks to transfer many of your buildings from uh, whatever fuel we're using now to, to natural gas. And um, I want to personally thank uh, Mr. Sheehy and Mr. Halauer and Mr. Genovese. We've been working with them very closely over the last few months and we have signed agreements with the town of Woodbridge to uh, continue with this project and we're now into the phase where it's going to happen. So it's an exciting time and we thought we'd come here tonight and give you a little update where we stand uh, on the project and um, with me tonight is Amos Barnes. Amos is uh, the head of our construction department and he will be heading up the construction activities here in Woodbridge. And uh, he'll give you a little briefing, and we'll be happy to answer any questions uh, that anybody has. I will add that we did have a, um, a public meeting for folks uh, along the route um, over at the, the church down the street. Um, it was well attended. Um, 
We also have progressed and we have over 10 people already, residential homes also signed up to have a service run at the same time. And uh, I talked to our salesperson, that Don Blomberg, that handles Woodbridge, and he's got 10 more appointments set up. So we're continuing to add folks and uh, make it a uh, value proposition for homeowners that we've done as opposed to town. So I'll turn it over to Amos, and then I'll be back to answer any You just want to just summarize the route again? That's so what Amos is going to do. Okay, yeah. okay. Thank you. <coughs> well, good evening. Thanks for having us here tonight. I'm just going to go through the, the phases of construction and just kind of remind you where we're actually going. Uh, our ga current gas feed feeds the Jewish Community Center on Amity Road. So our route will start up Amity Road and then come down Center Road to Newt Road to hit the main, main campus. And then it will come down Beecher Road down to the Beecher Road School. In addition, we will continue up Newt Road to Amity Regional High School. Now, uh, how do we really start this? Uh, we've already started. Uh, you may have seen some white marks put on the street along the routes I've just described. That's a precursor to what's called the California Dig System, which alerts all the other underground utilities where we're going to be doing excavation. So we've done that already. We've uh, applied for and received permits from the town of Woodbridge for all the town roads, both Newton, Meeting House, and Beecher. And we've applied to the state of Connecticut for uh, permission to begin construction on Amity Center and to on Crossing Green Road. Uh, those are still in the process, but we expect uh, to get them within the next week or two. Uh, so what are we going to do next? Uh, we're ready to go. And as early as Monday or Tuesday of next week, we're going to begin saw cutting. And that's saw cutting uh, the pavement that we have to break as part of the, uh, we have the pipe in the ground. Uh, our goal is to start in the Beecher Road school area and work northerly, then work through Newton Road, and then be, by then we should have permits and we can cut the state highway uh, uh, portion of the route. Uh, by the end of next week or early the following week, and we're still uh, trying to nail that down, we will have shovels in the ground. We will be up here with one crew. They're going to start uh, Beecher School. We met with uh, uh, Beecher School uh, superintendents and uh, administrators yesterday and went through what will happen on that site. We won't be on the site for very long, uh, no more than two days. And then we're going to continue heading north on Beecher, heading towards center. Uh, around the first week in, first to second week in July, a second crew will start. They will start on Amity Road and come up Amity and go down Center Road. Uh, we then will work with Amity Regional to work in the school property and work backwards uh, back to Center Road. Uh, the whole process of getting the gas in should be done by mid to late July. And uh, that includes the individual services to all the buildings, several at the, at the the Amity School campus, two down at Beecher School, several at the, uh, the Town Hall campus here, and all the buildings, including the library, the center, everything else, as well as the 12 to 20 residential customers that will have in the also. So how do we really construct? Well, I mentioned we saw a cut. Then we come in and we physically dig, uh, dig a trench. We pad that trench with sand. We put our plastic pipe in, we bury it with sand, and then uh, select backfill material, and then any asphalt that we've uh, removed, we put in a temporary three-inch asphalt uh, topping on it. And that happens just about every night that we're there. So that at the end of the day, when we're done, uh, the roads will be passable, uh, et cetera. We're gonna, we are going to move pretty fast. We could be moving uh, anywhere from four to 500 feet day uh, these streets, so it won't take that long. Um, if we're in the grass area, and there's some areas where we are off the pavement, uh, as soon as we're finished, we'll rake that out, and our landscapers will be in within a week or two after we, we get out, out of the area. So uh, that will be taken care of. As I said, you'll have gas by the uh, mid to late July. Probably two months after that, we will come back and do 
permanent restoration and uh, we'll probably work with the uh, public works director to determine what type of restoration they're looking for and uh, get that taken care of before the fall season. And then we're done. Right. And it's up to you to uh, do your work on your end, and uh, but I'm happy. As long as I get the pipe in the ground for you and you have gas by uh, the end of July, uh, we're in good shape. Mm -hmm. Any questions? How wide is the trench you think? The trench is only 22 inches wide typically. Now it could get wider if we hit a uh, rock, uh, so it, it may get a little wider, but that's typically as wide as we got 22 inches. And how big is the pipe? The pipe is six inches along Amity Road, Center Road, and Beecher. Four inches on Newton, two inches on Meeting House, and some of the lines going into the, uh, the buildings could be the diameter by thumb, or uh, inch and a quarter, about inch and a quarter diameter. That's it. How, how deep do you go? You typically go two and a half to three foot deep for the mains. The services are about two foot deep. We may go deeper if we have to go under a culvert or some other structure, um, but that's that's. Pretty <coughs> close to the and you'll be tapping off those main lines to the uh, to residences along the route. Correct. Right. We typically run the main line in its entirety first. We may run a few of the what we call services to the, the houses or buildings uh, as part of that process. Uh, and then we afterwards we go back and we, we do all those service connections. So the connection from the main line to the residence is free of charge? Correct. Laying the line, subject laying in the line, <laughs> subject to distance. Yeah, um, subject to distance and uh, model load and a house. Um, if, if people are going to do hot water and heat, it should be free to their house. That's correct. Yeah. And do you have a shutoff from the main line to the house? Is there? We have a variety of shutoffs that we use. Uh, one of the things that we're using because this is a high pressure system is it has an automatic uh, safety device on it called flow loader. This is required by federal code uh, as of two years ago. It's required to have it, but Southern Connecticut Gas has been using it for over 20 years. Uh, so that if the line was to be hit for any reason, it would automatically shut it off. <coughs> now, that's not possible at the schools, so there is a manual shutoff that's available. It's underground that can shut off the entire feed to either the campus or individual feeds into the buildings. There's also shutoffs on the meters that are outside of every structure. Okay, so there's a shutoff to the house, but there's not a shutoff to the road to the house. There's an automatic shutoff, and then some of the houses and or structures will have those shutoffs also, especially in the larger. So I just had a quick question. With reference to the property, the residences that are on the route, if they uh, connect up with you now, there's this free of charge or hopefully free of charge connection. If somebody, at what point, um, if somebody decides later to hook up on that route, at what point are you going to say too late? Now it's now there's a charge because I think people need to know what kind of time pressure, no pun intended, they might be under to either commit to this or not commit to this. I think people have the impression that they have six months. Well, the six months that we, we talked about um, is after we sign the contract and we run the line. At that point, folks have six months to actually hook up their equipment. So um, if, we, if you- But, if but you under, the, under the deal you're suggesting where you're gonna carry the cost for that. That's correct. Oh, okay, all right, so that was the understanding. But right. um, let me just tell you, if somebody approaches us two years from now and they're on the roof, right. the way that we handle that is that we take a look at the, the size of the house. Right. We take a look at how many people live in the house, what appliances people are gonna, and how far it's set back. Right now, throughout our whole system, if somebody's a uh, 100 foot setback or less, we can run that service for free uh -huh. if they're going heat and hot water as long as there's a lane in front of their house. So the chances are that most of the folks will, will, will fall within that setback and will be able to run it for whenever they want it. Uh, and you're making the distinction of heat and hot water as opposed to gas grill, gas stove, We're adding swimming all that pool, together. Right. generator, that's all potentially but cost. Just, just to put all our, um, to make sure full disclosure, um, sometimes we get people that say, I only want to put in the gas um, cooktop in uh -huh. my kitchen. I want to do my kitchen over. Right. Uh, that doesn't provide enough revenue to be able to uh, satisfy the construction costs 
of 100 foot line and 70,000. We really need the revenue from uh, <laughs> we need <laughs> we need the revenue from the heat and hot water to be able to justify the investment. Okay, we are going on. Well, that's important for people to know. Unless they want to pay for it. For it. That's correct. And that's right. We have an application to serve, so we have what we call an aided um, um, CIAC, which is an aided construction. Um, so we would quote you a price and say, you know, it's, it's eighteen hundred dollars for us to run that line, or whatever. The, that's not the right number. But we would do a cal financial calculation and tell folks if they just wanted a gas grill, what it what would cost them to get a line. I just want to make sure people who are out there who might be listening to this, who are on that route, understand what's available to them and when they need to exercise. Yeah, I, I would <coughs> encourage folks um, that are interested to, to, to look on our website, uh, www.socongas.com, Southern Connecticut Gas, if you want to look it up on Google, and look, how do I convert to natural gas? Don Blomberg is our man on the street here in Woodbridge signing residential folks. They'll make an appointment with folks, come out to their house, take a look at their equipment, give them a chance to give them some contractors if they need help in selecting a contractor and take them through the process. Okay, um, that's helpful. And it's, it's probably beneficial, like you said, if people do it now so that there's less <laughs> disruption in the town where when we have our construction people here, we can do the construction, run the services, and then we're out of town and we're doing our permanent paving and we're not mm -hmm. continuing to disrupt your traffic. Or, so if you're interested, call us and you know, we'll be happy to come out and do the individually. And, and that said, we'll be happy to come back anytime. Yeah, we'll be happy to come back two years from now or, or whatever. Any other questions or comments? If not, then uh, good luck with the project. Thank you. Okay. Thank, and, uh, you. thank you for uh, all your considerations. Thank you very much. We've left some uh, cards with, uh, with Joe um, so that if folks are um, interested, they can get one from him in the residence, and we'd be happy to come out and make a point. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. <coughs> okay, so the next item on the agenda is the Massaro Farm August Camp, and Alicia Sosha and David Schneider are here. Uh, and we have a memo in your, you have a memo in your packet concerning this. Diane King. Good evening. Hi, I'm Dave Schneider. I'm here tonight as the treasurer of Masaro Farm. And uh, Elisa Black is our um, newly uh, retained uh, education director, which we're glad to have so we can actually do some education at the farm more than we have been. And for you, those of you who don't know, Lisa, she was born in Woodbridge, I guess, right? Grew up here and went through the schools here and is a resident of Woodbridge and has a master's degree in environmental education uh, and has taught at summer camps. And so what we're here tonight really is to <coughs> talk about, uh, get, get your permission hopefully to continue with running our first uh, summer day camp uh, in conjunction with the recreation department. Uh, Diane King, who I guess I haven't seen the memo particularly that she wrote, but she's teaching yoga right now and made me over before we're <coughs> done here, but she's the chairman of our education committee. Um, and basically, <coughs> uh, Diane and Elisa met uh, with uh, John Adamovich and, and then with the rec commission uh, who he and they were all in favor of doing this and what we're <coughs> proposing simply, uh, it would be a two week uh, or two separate weeks of a day camp at the farm <coughs> would be the weeks of August 8th and, and August 13th, uh, which would be at the end of the normal recreation uh, programs. Uh, I think Dr. Stolen mentioned those earlier. We would, we're proposing to have two groups. There would be a six and seven year old group and an eight, nine year old group, maximum of, of 10 uh, children in each group. Uh, at least it would be the director. Uh, we have an assistant director, Donna Werbel, who also has a lot of experience in this area uh, as a Bethany resident. Um, I, I think we're very excited to be able to offer this as our first uh, summer day camp, and hopefully in the future we can expand it to more time and, and more children. Um, and the more important thing <coughs> from <coughs> your standpoint is that there will be uh, no cost to the town for this. Uh, we're we're 
paying the, the uh, taking from the registration fees and the cost of running the program. And Lisa, you want to add a little bit about what, what the program will be like? Um, yeah, it, we're going to <coughs> uh, try and uh, keep in in line with the um, mission of the Sorrow Community Farm, which is to keep farming, feed people, and build community. So we're hoping that the campers will be able to actively explore the farm's 57 acres of woods, fields, and wetlands, and includes um, five acres of crops that are in active production this season. Um, we're going to provide structured activities that will encourage learning about nature, the daily operations of a working organic farm, healthy food and nutrition, and the interconnectedness of all living things. Um, the farm has some great resources. We have a newly established hiking trail. We have a learning garden. We have honey producing apiaries and a flock of chickens. And a typical day would revolve around a focus theme when there would be time for learning and exploration with a healthy snack from the farm with games, associated stories, and a snack. How many hours? Be 9 to 12. 9 to 12. Nine to 12. Same as Rag. Same as rag right. <coughs> and and Tony and I have spoken too about some of the details as well as they've spoken to our commission. I think we have that pretty well. We resolved, the, we resolved all the uh, questions concerning <coughs> the a question in the memo concerning insurance, <coughs> and we reviewed our insurance coverage. And the um, as long as the rec camp is as the camp at Masaro is uh, is is uh, structured like the camp for recreation in terms of its policies, procedures, staffing, et cetera, et cetera, then it would be covered in, under our policy, and we would have no issues under that. And that's what they've been working with John to make sure that all that we'll have the right staff and thing to do that. And and the, the farm itself, of course, says it's <coughs> its own insurance that. Uh, as the town's additional name insured, right. and I've checked with our insurance agent who assures me that we're fine for the camp. So I think we're okay on the insurance. So REC staff is also going to be the, the staff yeah. at the Masara Farm? There'll be one REC staff, as my understanding, that will be um, uh, assisting, what do you call them? But not all the counselors are going to be over there. No. 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 I'll be one of the counselors and this other woman, Donna, um, but some of the assistant counselors might be from REC. Might be from there. Yeah. So they would be town employees and not and not employees of, of the CSA. Or the I, I think the way we've worked it out, and I think Tony, if I'm right, they would all <coughs> be town employees, Correct. but the money to pay them um, would come from the registration Correct. fees. Similar to just like rec registration would come from the attendees. They would be on the town payroll. They would be paid for through the through the program. Mm -hmm. Within the recreation budget. Correct. As supplemented by fees. Right. Correct. Yeah, but there's yeah. no there is no there, should, there will be no out of pocket cost. Well and there is no Masaro farm portion of the budget. So Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. I think it's a wash from the town standpoint. Right. In fact I think Correct. you're gonna get ten dollars a, a camper for administration. For administrative charges. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions or comments about the camp? And so what you're looking for us tonight, Dave, is to have a, a motion to approve this arrangement. Correct, because as soon as you do that, we can start advertising it, which we'd like to do tomorrow. We can. Great idea. Yep. All right, so I entertain a motion to approve the uh, Masaro Farm August Camp for the weeks of August 8 and August 13, as described by uh, David Schneider and set forth in this memo from Diane King. So there's a second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> right. So, uh, we can, uh, our next item on the agenda is the town council report. And that's, uh, <coughs> most of the time. Good time. Yep. So, uh, the first item under the, uh, well, why don't we take up the second item under the Town Council's report, which is to authorize the first selectman to sign a lease for the Darling House caretakers. And so... This is their Mary Dean is back there, I see. So this is a lease <coughs> that um, <coughs> the 
Darling House is presented, uh, presented to us for signature. We reviewed it with Mary, uh, who's, who's uh, involved with the Historical Society. And as you all can see, it's a one-year lease, new tenant from what they've had before. The yeah, only we change- We don't have that, do we? Yeah, oh, you don't have the lease? No, we didn't get it. Yeah. No, I, I never received it. Oh, okay. Well, I have it here. You want to make copies? Uh, I, can, I can describe it to you with, even without um, the copies. If you want to look at it, you can, we can make copies and give it to you. I thought you sent that. No. That's, I have that. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me, just, let me just describe the lease to you I, and I can uh, uh, go over it. If you, have, if you want to take a look. New tenants are going to be Aaron Taylor and Caitlin uh, Booker Cantor. And they will be leasing the property for one year beginning July 1st, 2012. Uh, they will be paying uh, the historical system, they will be paying the sum of uh, uh, $800 per month on the first day of every month. And they're going to use the premises, they're going to be caretakers of the premises as the tenants have been in the past. The only difference that this lease has from prior leases with tenants of the Darling House is that these tenants are going to be doing some. Uh, some agricultural growing of uh, vegetables, and they've asked re uh, permission to do that. We've included in the lease for the Board of Selectmen's approval, and ultimately they have intentions of uh, selling the produce to the public at, at perhaps a farm stand alongside of, uh, of the premises on which field turn pipe. Um, <coughs> the, the lease has some standard clauses, no pets al allowed, only the two people who are the tenants will be allowed to live on the property. They have to provide insurance to the town. Uh, they can't store uh, dangerous chemicals. They can't assign the lease without the permission of the town. Um, and the tenants are responsible for making repairs to the property. Um, and um, the usual provisions that if they default, the town can sue them and get them out of the premises. Very simple lease. We've used this at least the last two years and probably longer. It's the exact same thing, except with the exception of different tenants, one year term, and permission to uh, grow vegetables with the possibility of a farm stand to sell the produce to the public. Do we hate that field there? Was that one of the fields that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, we do not. Oh, sorry. Would have been the terms in the past? That terms have been identical. Well, the term has been a, a year. I think we always enter in one year leases. There are always one year okay. leases. Yeah. And it starts July 1? July 1. Okay. Yeah. And we have, an we have an exhibit <laughs> that's going to go <laughs> attached to the lease, which shows where the, uh, uh, the uh, produce are going to be grown and the exact uh, description of the property that they're going to be. So do you want a copy of the lease before you vote on it? Uh, you can do that. If you want the lease or if you can just vote, again, this is exactly what, have been, what we've had in the past. And if you have any questions, Mary, or... Standard lease, the same lease we've been using? Yeah. Same lease we've been yeah. using, right. This, when you say roadside stand to sell produce, I hope I'm not being uh, reactionary, but does the state need to be involved? And is, is this a traffic... It, it says it's got to, they got to, they have to comply with all local state rules concerning the farm stand, whatever those may be. So it's they, can't be, they yeah, can't be, in viol they can't be in violation of any of those rules. I, I'm comfortable voting for it without seeing the lease. Is that, is that the consensus? Okay. All right, so uh, you've heard the presentation. I'd entertain a motion to authorize the first selection to sign the lease with the Darling House caretakers as described by Attorney Weiner. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Great. Okay. And they've already signed it. They, uh, they've already signed it, so it, the first selectman has to sign it. Right. Okay. Okay. So it's it's now ten of seven. What I'd ask is, since public comments are at seven, uh, I'd ask that we have permission to move on to item number seven on the agenda. Director of Finance and Operations report. We'll do that till seven o'clock. Then we'll hear uh, public comments, and then we'll go to Town Council's report, which will be an executive session. You want me to sign now? You must have it. So you need a motion for that? Yes. 
Fabian is here, who is our librarian, and under the Director of Finance and Operations report under other, there's a report from the Personnel Committee. So, um, Tony, do you want to share that report? Yep. There were two um, actions taken by the Personnel Committee, which I want to bring to your attention. The first was um, a position that we had open, a full-time custodian position at the library. Um, we um, uh, received Possibly about 30 to 35 applicants. Wow. And um, we reviewed 11 applicants. And um, there was a panel of three, which was Todd Fabian, Joe Hellauer, and myself. And um, after reviewing all of the applicants, it was our unanimous uh, choice amongst all three. We, 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 re we interviewed them together and asked the same questions and um, used the same process for all candidates and then um, separately come up with our, um, our candidates. And um, our unanimous choice was Carlos Torres. He is a, currently a part-timer at the library, at the uh, pool rather. He um, has been working for us for about six years. He um, comes with high recommendation and he does a great job at the pool and um, works there on weekends and um, quite often a lot of times He's there, uh, you know, working without supervision and uh, does a great job. He's also a custodian at the library in Shelton, so he has library experience as well. And um, also, it was the best uh, candidate during the process. So, uh, those things, three things combined, uh, is what our recommendation was. And was, was um, voted unanimously by the personnel committee. Okay, so uh, I'd entertain a motion to hire <coughs> Carlos Torres as, as outlined by uh, Tony Genovese as the uh, full-time librarian, uh, custodian at the library. <coughs> so, no, you're the librarian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion made. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yep. And the second was um, a, um, there was a recommendation from the police commission for a, a merit increase for Janice Innocenzi for 2% uh, um, above her current salary. And uh, that was also reviewed by the personnel committee and in, in light of her excellent work and her invaluable service to the police department was voted unanimously for a 2% merit increase. Thank you. Okay, so that amounts to it's nine hundred and thirteen dollars, I believe it was per year. Forty-four cents an hour. Forty-four cents an hour, right? She serves as the uh, secretary to the uh, police commission and to the chief of police. Handles a number of confidential matters and does them with the dispatch and profession. So I'd entertain a motion to approve the recommendation of the personnel committee. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimous. Okay. And continuing on with your report, uh, Tony, why don't okay. you give us your monthly report? Okay. Okay. Um, our monthly report through May of 2012 is a positive one. The um, report is a surplus of approximately $667,000 uh, for the year, which is uh, brings our fund balance to 4.48 million or 10.6 percent of our annual budget. A couple of highlights for you. Most of that act, uh, activity and that surplus activity is in revenues. The first was uh, the receipt of a reimbursement for um, Hurricane Irene, which we discussed. We received $275,000 for those reimbursement costs. That's in addition to some small items some small grants that we received that we had not budgeted for from the state. That's a large item uh, there. Uh, charges for services is pretty close to budget. We have a surplus in building permits, uh, but that's offset by a shortfall in recreation fees. Those are the two large items there. So that's pretty close to budget. Um, interest income is and remains at all time low. 
uh, we have a shortfall projected there of about 50,000. Finally, um, we had um, a few large tax, back tax collections that were large, um, and that results in a surplus in taxes of $260,000. Mm -hmm. um, so those are our main uh, items there that uh, caused that uh, surplus. On our expenditures, um, some of these we've discussed before, I'll go through them. The liability insurance um, is a bit of surplus of about 15000 We did really well in our uh, quotes this year, and so we have a surplus there. We actually have, due to a warmer than anticipated winter, have a savings in heating oil uh, for the center building. That's about $10,000 there. Uh, that's a large item that I wanted to bring to your attention. There's also savings in some of the other buildings, but that one is a particularly large one as it's our biggest user. Public Works uh, have, shall have a savings of about $10,000 due to, um, partly due to savings in sand salt materials uh, due to our warmer than anticipated winter. Waste management, uh, there's a surplus of $15,000 for um, lower than anticipated um, tonnage for our municipal, tip, municipal tipping fees, and that's um, in waste management. And finally, in our health uh, benefits line, there's a surplus of about $125,000. That's due to a renegotiated plan design, which we've gone over before for coverage for our employees, as well as some coverage types of our employees have changed from um, a more expensive to less expensive type. So those are some of our um, expenditure highlights for you. Okay, any questions on the monthly report? If not, if not then we'll move on to tax refunds. We have a memo here from Pat Crisco, dated June of 2012 requesting uh, real estate refunds of $113.46 and motor vehicle refunds in the amount of $179.13. So I entertain a motion to approve those refunds. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. And the next item are uh, funding requests. First of which is line item transfer number 1112-4313,000. This is a uh, request from uh, the Public Works Department to transfer within their budget to rent a screener to screen topsoil behind the Public Works garage. You can see there's a, um, a memo there which describes the rental to allow for um, uh, topsoil to be used for various purposes. And, uh, Including, um, do we rent one every year? Not every year, no. How much they cost? It's it's quite expensive to uh, to buy. You mean? Huh. Is it Thirteen thousand dollars to rent it for one month. For one month, right? It's it hundreds says, of thousands of dollars that to buy. Doesn't include the feeder, right? Right. The feeder is separate. Right. They're very very expensive. Why well, you got one you want to sell? <laughs> oh, I wish I did. <laughs> we only do this every two or three years. I, I believe that was the last time we did it. Okay, so I'd entertain a motion to approve line item transfer number 1112-43 in the amount of $13,000. So moved. Second. Se okay, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Next is line item transfer number 1112-44, $9,000. This is um, a request from the uh, Waste Management Department, and um, uh, if you've noticed, we have, uh, if you've been up to the transfer station, two concrete pads where the MSW compactors are located are in um, a really tough shape mm -hmm. and are no longer, to be, we, we've been repairing them for a number of years, spot repairing damaged areas, and um, we felt like it was something we couldn't wait to, um, to fix. It was brought to our attention later or we would have you put it into the budget. The pads and things where the big containers sit. Yeah, in, okay. and they have to every every day it's, when they take them out, they have to yeah, pull yeah. them out, and then they yeah. you know they put them back in. Yeah. And there's always yeah yeah. All right, so I entertain a motion to approve line item transfer number one 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 two dash forty four in the amount of nine thousand dollars. So moved. Second. A second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Just a quick question: Will this uh, cause any uh, disruption or interruption of operations? Good question. 
and um, we've timed the installation specifically so that it can be done around the delivery of the um, and the removal of the containers. So it's closed on Sunday and Monday. Yeah, mm -hmm. it closed on Sunday and Monday. So probably do it on Monday. Okay. On a Monday when there's um, yeah, that would you be know good. it's on regular time. And then uh, well, it's got a set too. So it's going to be more than just a day. Yeah. But it, it is in bad shape. I did notice right. that. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Next is line item transfer number 1112-453,000. This is for a, um, a diagnostic system for the town, or, uh, town uh, garage rather, for mechanics to use for uh, diagnosing problems with trucks and vehicles. Uh, we did an analysis of, of um, sending them out for a diagnosis and this would be a lot more cost effective to do it in-house. Okay, so I'd entertain a motion to approve line item transfer number 1112-45 in the amount of $3,000. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Next is line item transfer number 1112-47, $3,800. Um, these are to, uh, this transfer is to fund within our information systems department um, a few computers to keep some pace with our computer replacement plan. We had some issues with some of our um, our um, computers earlier in the year and our servers that required us to spend some of the money in that line, so uh, we had to transfer this uh, to purchase some computers that we would keep uh, keep us in pace with our current plan. We purchase every year a few computers uh, after they reach the end of the useful life. How many computers is there in it? It's about seven hundred dollars a computer. So how many years does a computer last? About five. Depends on the user. If it's just a um, an average user with just this word processing the internet and that sort of thing, we keep them a long time, probably five years. Um, if it's somebody who does a lot of spreadsheets and uh, access and you know more complicated <coughs> stuff and may get replaced sooner. Sometimes those PCs are given to others who are not as high a user, so we'll take that and move it to someone else. And we get really get a lot of use, a lot, a lot of life out of our computers. All right. So I entertain a motion to approve line item transfer number one 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 two dash forty seven, the amount of thirty eight hundred dollars. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, seek by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. And finally, is line item transfer number 1112-48 in the amount of $4,000? This is within the police budget, and there's a, a memo attached from um, uh, Deputy Chief Ray Stewart, and this is for narrow banding of the radio system for fire and police, and um, the request is from uh, the processing line to their repair and maintenance line so that they can get this accomplished. I believe there's a, a deadline here of uh, September. Mm -hmm. Yes. September 1st, is it, Joe? Yes. yes. Right. <coughs> and so um, this is something he wanted to get done this year. Okay. He found money in his budget. He did. It's good. Yep. Okay, so I entertain a motion to approve line item transfer number 1112-48, the amount of $4,000. So Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay, it's a little a couple minutes after seven, uh, so we'll take up public comments. Is there anyone here who would like to make a public comment? Everybody in the audience is coming up. <laughs> Almost. I'm here first. Believe me, hurt you. I can't advise. Can't I'm Chuck Pine, 162 Center Road, and I'm here to talk about the information that we saw at the uh, public meeting a couple nights ago. Sorry about that. Uh, regarding the funding for the garage, uh, I think Andy uh, Anthony did a really good job of graphically depicting the exposure to our long-term debt uh, with the graph that, that showed how our debt service on some older bonds is going to fade away and how we have new expenses coming up for Beecher Road and for the police department. And then to show a little bit on the top as to how the garage would affect us, the, uh, the, the spikes didn't look too bad at all. And I would say based on information that, you know, 
green light the program. However, after thinking about it some more and you know, replaying the meeting in my head, I don't think we have all the information, at least out in front of everybody. The, the number that I understand was put into that presentation from Anthony was 12 million bucks for Beecher Road. Uh, and my understanding is that that's the money that's part of phase one. I think the Beecher School Committee has done a good job of trying to move into a phased approach to spend that money. But I think two things. Number one, that's not, that's not all the money that's going to wind up going into Beecher Road for all that work. And that all that money that we really do anticipate, even if it isn't all at one time, needs to be part of that graphic representation and the battle plan to see how much more debt we are going to incur on, on the, the Beecher Road project. I would say similarly, the number that he used for the, 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 uh, the police renovation is probably a nice middle number, but probably not the final number either. So I, I would say that we haven't seen what you might call the worst case scenario, including those two projects. I would also remind everybody here that our estimation as to the final expenses on some big projects in town aren't always great at the beginning. I mean, we looked at seven million bucks for the golf course and we weren't planning on cutting the deal with Casper. You guys dropped another sixty to seventy thousand dollars on that tent just last weekend. You know, that, that's all money that wasn't part of the seven million dollar discussion when we went ahead with the golf course. So I'd say that on top of the, the money that we anticipate now, you should probably put in a little bit more of a buffer anticipating additional expenses that will be real to us. So I would suggest that before this board moves ahead with the, the garage program as, as explained a couple nights ago, that you put Mr. Genevieve's to work and look at a couple more graphs that include those additional numbers. I don't think that's a huge burden. He's got excellent uh, Excel skills. Um, but I, I think that these are, these are not red herrings. I think these, these are real numbers that are they're floating out there in these committees who've done a lot of work. And I think the premise was very good, but it was incomplete. So I would suggest that you, you don't advance this project until you've, as a board, looked at those numbers and decided if you still want to go ahead with this thing, all things considered. One other point I will make about some of the comments made at, at the public hearing. I, as, as insensitive as this may sound, I don't think deciding on going forward with the project based on a particular group within town, meaning the public works folks, have waited long enough is the litmus test to decide to go forward with the project. I try to compare these, these big town projects to stuff that I've done around my house. When we moved in here, we needed a new kitchen, and we knew it, and we couldn't afford it. So even as the kitchen was starting to show signs of wear, and as we were pulling you know, drawers out, and the fronts were pulling off the drawers, and the silverware was still in there, the decision was not made to renovate our kitchen based on, well, honey, I think you've suffered long enough. Let's get a new kitchen. The decision was made based on, we have other priorities, but this is a big one. Is this the time we can afford to go ahead with the project? And it was at that time we decided to spend a ridiculous amount of money to go forward with the kitchen renovation. I would compare the decision of this garage in the same vein, and that the threshold for moving forward is not the pain and suffering that the staff has clearly endured. That's not a question. These guys do a bionic amount of work with, with very little tools. but. The issue here is, can the town afford it vis-a-vis -vis the other projects that are clearly on the horizon? So I would ask you to separate the, the emotional and, and, and I would say heartstring uh, approach to the decision for the garage from the practical aspect of all the financial exposures the town has as we're moving forward with this decision. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Okay, is there any other member of the public uh, who has any comments? I thought I'd... Uh, Chime in as a member oh, of the. Why don't we look? Okay. If there's any. Oh, go ahead. All right. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, uh, I'm part of this administration, but I'm also a, a tax paying resident, and I uh, am aware that this is likely the last regular meeting of this board before the end of the fiscal year. And so I thought I'd just take a minute to acknowledge uh, those of you at the, at the head table uh, who represent the face of this administration. You know, I, I think back over this fiscal year, uh, I guess your first project was to try to extend the lease of the former tenant on the Country Club of Woodbridge, and those talks, I'm sure, were long and, uh, and frustrating at times, and, uh, and, they, and, and then it turned out they weren't fruitful, but, uh, you know, that, that was an exercise, a time-consuming exercise. You moved right from that into uh, into uh, entertaining bids for a subdivision of that property, went through uh, 
uh, extensive negotiations with Toll Brothers, and then this board put that matter before the uh, town. And again, it proved, uh, you know, it proved to be an exercise uh, without that didn't necessarily bear fruit. Um, sprinkled into all of these special projects, you uh, prepared the budget for fiscal year 13. Uh, Tony, most of this is directed at you, I guess, but you're all at the front table. Um, and, uh, and you did it without breaking stride in the midst of all these other special projects. Uh, then as part of the budget process, the Country Club of Woodbridge Commission was formed and a whole new town department came, came into being. As part of that, a request for bids and then entertaining bids and then negotiating a contract with, uh, with Billy Casper Golf. Um, the budget for fiscal year 13 came together in very difficult economic times. You talk about historic lows in terms of interest income. Uh, recreation fees that didn't meet expectations, all these challenges. Uh, but, the, but the year ahead came in with a very modest increase. And then, uh, and now you're delivering the FY12 budget with a, with a surplus of something that might be a half million dollars. And I, um, I think it was an extraordinary year. And I, as a resident, just want to acknowledge all your, all your efforts. Um, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Hi. Tony at the State Show 10 Jeremy Garden Lane. Uh, first, I'd like to echo Mr. Pine's sentiments on the worst case scenario. I would love to see that. Uh, previously, in a few other meetings for the Toll Brothers and a few others, I've asked for that worst case scenario, and usually. You guys agree to it, but I never actually see it. I would love to see a worst case scenario on the budget if these projects come in way over the numbers we're looking at. Um, that being said, the reason I really wanted to talk tonight was Southern Connecticut Gas Company. Is there any future plans? Has there been any discussion of additional roadways or areas of uh, possible new construction for the gas line? Or has that we just taking it on one section at a time. Is there a grander plan? Their plan is to uh, continue expansion into Woodbridge. They haven't given us a timetable for that other than the plan that's before us now that comes up to the center here, the complex, the center complex, the municipal complex, and the uh, center road, and along Beecher Road, and over to the Ben Jacob on Rimmon Road. They do plan to continue that, but uh, as I say, they haven't given us any dates for that. They are interested, uh, and uh, some of these areas are relatively uh, highly populated by Woodbridge standards, so there should be an inducement for them to do that. Well, I can understand that certainly from their, at their end of it, they're going to look for the most populated areas where the biggest bang for their buck is, so to speak. But I was wondering, is there any room that we have on our end for negotiating purposes to say, fine, you can come into these areas, but we need you to come into a few of these as well. Because what's going to happen, of course, is they're going to go to the most densely populated areas, and then they're going to find where they think economically doesn't make sense and do that in the next town, the next town, and by the time they get to some of the less populated areas, it may be many, many years down the line. What I'm wondering is, does the town hold a position where we can negotiate such a thing with them rather than just say, sure, come and take cherry pick, but instead of just cherry picking, give us a little more of the roads that maybe are adjacent or of, is there something we can do to try to get them to push their envelope to maybe areas that aren't as fruitful for them, but it's fruitful for the town and for the residents. For example, I live on a road that, I, li I live on Jeremy Garden Road, it's, it's certainly not going to be high on their priority. I probably won't see it in my lifetime. But normal Bunker Hill Road. Well, sure. <laughs> and my point is, but maybe we can get it to peas, or maybe. And the closer you get, it's kind of the old cable system. They went to all the major areas, and then eventually they went to. The, and if you, the closer you got, the more residents at least got a hold of it, and then it made more sense for them to go that extra couple thousand feet the next time, and maybe get to P Jeremy off a of piece someday. So my point is, is it possible, or at least consider it, consider the fact that when you talk to Southern Gas we play that a little bit for them so that maybe we could stretch out their plans a little. 
Well, yeah, we have one member of the Board of Select who is very interested in that. Uh, yeah, I think they already Susan find Susan Jacobs me, who's I, right on the I think they line. find me very annoying, actually. But so, great. Apropos, <laughs> apropos of what you're saying, I think there's it's, it's two pieces. It's it's a town piece being open to it, but it's also a cluster neighborhood piece. So, for instance, uh, my plan is to uh, write to every neighbor along a route that continues, to, that makes a loop, and all the cul-de-sacs off of that, and try and get those people, which is a which is a lot, it's Center Road, the rest of Rimmon Road, and the neighborhoods in between, to try and get a cluster group there that will apply pressure to say to them, bring it down the main roads and let these cul-de-sacs feed off of it. So I don't think it, I don't know at that point how much of it is a town pressure, so much as it is a neighborhood pressure mm -hmm. with town support. That's the that's what I'm getting right. from them. Well, maybe they can even do some kind of polling or some kind of questionnaire to the town. Well, I did say that I did say that you want me to do your job for you, and they basically said yes. yes. So <laughs> because obviously our energy costs right. were in the northeast, yeah, right. we're withholding to oil. Right. We're one of the few places yeah. in the world left, with, or at least in the country, right. withholding to oil. Yep. And the, the, you know, with all due respect to no, green energy, right, right now right. gas is going to be where our savings can be in the near right. future. So it'd be nice if the town residents felt like there's a potential of it. Maybe we would get behind some kind of effort right. to petition the gas company. I think if you're on a main road, or approximate to a main road, you have a good shot of seeing it. I don't want to give a time frame, but you have a good shot of seeing it. Next phase. If you're on the cul-de-sac me you know yeah. right you're me okay, okay. I, I just like you to consider I think it's when you're talking to them to kind right. of maybe there's some no, negotiating absolutely. of at least right. bringing it to additional areas we'll continue that discussion with them thank you Thanks. Okay. any other members of the public all right so, uh getting back to your report uh, tony uh we have a bid waiver request from the uh, fire chief yes for the purchase of radios and accessories okay the uh, fire chief is requesting a uh, wi bid waiver to purchase radios and accessories which are in the budget from a uh, Motorola off state bid, which we is typically do with the radio equipment. And uh, that's the nature of the request. And this is already in their yep. budget? Correct. Okay. Yeah, it's in the capital budget, actually. Right. Yeah. It's the capital non recurring Correct. Correct. Right, right. correct. Mm -hmm. This bid for 34 radios. And a savings of $7,100. Right. So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay. So, do we want to get into town council's report? Okay. I entertain a motion then to go into executive session pursuant to section 1 2069 c of the Connecticut General Statutes to discuss uh, claims involving MDM golf. So moved. We'll see. And invite the people who are at the table to uh, attend. 